This podcast discusses Catching Fire by Susan Collins, the second book in her Hunger Games trilogy, released in 2009 by Scholastic. Fair warning, if you have not yet read the Hunger Games, there will be spoilers within this podcast. The genre of the book is science fiction. It is written for ages 12 to 16, but the reading level is about at a fifth grade level. I want to start out with a short summary of the book. As I said, Catching Fire is the second book in the Hunger Games trilogy. It takes place where the first book left off, with Katniss Everdeen and Peeta Malark returning home to their District 12 after winning the 74th Hunger Games. As they move through their victory tour, they see the signs of a rebellion within the different districts of the Panem. On the return of their tour, it is announced that during the 75th Hunger Games, called the Quarter Quell, Names will be selected from previous Hunger Games winners. As Katniss and Peeta return to the Hunger Games for a second year in a row, they join up with previous victors to attempt to win the games. Ultimately, their crew defeats the force field of the games arena and escapes as they learn of the rebellion against the capital throughout the districts. I'd like to do a few readings from the text. The first is before Katniss and Peeta return to the Hunger Games, and it is a discussion between Katniss and her friend Gail. It's on pages 99 and 100. Nothing. In person, I just heard something. As usual, it's a little too late. I give up and tell him, I saw something on the mayor's television. I wasn't supposed to. There was a crowd and fires, and the peacekeepers were gunning people down, but they were fighting back. I bite my lip and struggle to continue describing the scene. Instead, I say aloud the words that have been eating me up inside. And it's my fault, Gail, because of what I did in the arena. If I had just killed myself with those berries, none of this would have happened. Peter would have come home and lived, and everyone else would have been safe too. Safe to do what? He says in a gentler tone. Starve? Work like slaves? Send their kids to the reaping? You haven't hurt people. You've given them an opportunity. They just have to be brave enough to take it. There's already been talk in the minds. People who want to fight. Don't you see? It's happening. It's finally happening. If there's an uprising in District 8, why not here? Why not everywhere? This could be it. The thing we've been... Stop it. You don't know what you're saying. The peacekeepers outside of 12, they're not like Darius or even Cray. The lives of the district people... They mean less than nothing to them, I say. That's why we have to join the fight, he answers harshly. So this scene sort of sets up the relationship that Katniss has with her friend Gail and also talks about her feelings towards the rebellion and how she's sort of unsure of it at this time in the beginning of the book, um, as she was in the first um, book, The Hunger Games, as well. The second two passages I want to read both take place while Katniss and her friends are participating in the Hunger Games. The first is from page 285. I walk with the force field to my left, because that's supposed to be the side with my superhuman ear. But since that's all made up, I cut down a bunch of hard nuts that hang like grapes from the nearby tree and toss them ahead of me as I go. It's good I do, too, because I have a feeling I'm missing the patches that indicate the force field more often than I'm spotting them. Whenever a nut hits the force field, there's a puff of smoke before the nut lands, blackened, and with a cracked shell, on the ground at my feet. After a few minutes, I become aware of a smacking sound behind me, and I turn to see Mags peeling the shells off of one of the nuts and popping it into her already full mouth. Mags, I cry, spit that out. It could be poisonous. She mumbles something and ignores me, licking her lips with apparent relish. I look to Finnick for help, but he just laughs. I guess we'll find out, he said. I like this passage because it sort of shows that there is a little bit of humor in this very dire circumstance, and it shows a relationship that is being built between the players of the game. The last passage I have is from page 336. We circle around the cornucopia, scrutinizing the jungle. It has a baffling uniformity. I remember the tall tree that took the first lightning strike at 12 o'clock, but every sector has a similar tree. Johanna thinks to follow Anombria's and Brutus's tracks, but they have been blown or washed away. There's no way to tell where anything is. I should have never mentioned the clock, I say bitterly. Now they've taken that advantage away as well. Only temporarily, says Beatty. At ten we'll see the wave again and be back on track. 
Yes, they can't redesign the whole arena, says Peta. Doesn't matter, says Johanna impatiently. You had to tell us or we never would have moved out camp in the first place, brainless. Ironically, her logical, if demeaning, reply is the only one that comforts me. Yes, I had to tell them to get them to move. Come on, I need water. Anybody have a good gut feeling? Again, this passage shows a relationship. It also sort of gives us, a, gives us an idea of the personality of Kat and how she feels about herself as well as those around her. I saw a number of themes in this text, and there's three I want to talk about. Um, the strongest of which I see coming out of the second book is that of rebellion. Um, Katniss rebels against what is expected of her, and she slowly learns to rebel against the capital. Throughout the first book of The Hunger Games, she shows that rebellion against what people expect her to be and do, but it's not till this book that we start to see this rebellion against the capital, the government, and the plans put in place to hold individuals under governmental control. The use of the symbols, such as the Mockingjay and Katniss's role as the unsuspecting leader of the rebellion, play out really well in this novel as well. A second theme that I see is really prominent is survival. Uh, not only do individuals in all the districts need to find ways to survive under the brutal conditions placed on them by the capital and the government rule, including those which created the Hunger Games, as a way to sort of squelch rebellion and unrest. The participants in the Hunger Games must also learn to survive as they fight to stay alive in the capital's manipulation of the individuals as well as the public perception. Lastly, I, I want to talk about the theme of interdependence versus independence. It's very strong in this book, as both Katniss and Peta work together to survive, not only in their life after the games, but as they return to the games to compete. Um, this book, more than the first, shows how strongly they want each other to survive, even more than they want to see themselves survive. That interdependence that they have also appears as the districts, all 12, learn to work together in order to overthrow the capital and fight for their independence and fight for their freedom. So because of these three themes especially, there's a number of connections in this book. Um, it's a very much a scientific text, but it could be used in the classroom to discuss ideas of government control, especially looking at maybe different forms of government, socialism, communism, capitalism, and the freedoms or perceived freedoms and lack of freedom in each. Um, it's also an interesting take, though extreme, on the idea of reality television. All this is being televised. It's all supposed to be reality. Um, and it could be really used to discuss the role of reality television and reality television's place in modern society as both a form of entertainment and as a social commentary. Um, this book also reminds me of a modern-day Lord of the Flies meets 1984, and it could be used as its comparison contrast with either of those texts. My reaction to the book was interesting. Uh, it took me a really long time to read this series. I tried to stay away from it, but once I started to read the books, I couldn't put them down. I was drawn into the world. I wanted to know what happened to the rebellion. I hated the Capitol, and I despised President Snow. Um, the books are a quick read. They're engaging, and they draw you in. This book, um, Catching Fire, really seemed re a bit repetitive of The Hunger Games, and at times I would have wished for a different plot than a return to the games. But the games are the only really unifying central location for all the districts to come together. Um, so I saw the need for Collins to return to the arena in order to gather the districts together for rebellion. Um, though the fact that she did create a trilogy, it also doesn't leave much wonder as to what will happen at the end of book two in order to carry the readers into that third book, Mockingjay. The book has gotten mixed reception, though most positive. Um, Gabriella Zevin of the New York Times wrote, Collins has done that rare thing. She has written a sequel that improves upon the first book. As a reader, I felt excited and even hopeful. Could it be that this series and its characters were actually going somewhere? Um, though most people are in the sim as similar as Zevin in their thoughts on the book, there is some criticism as well. The Novel World blogger um, enjoyed the book, but she did have some valid critiques. She says, I did have a problem with Katniss, though. Throughout most of the book, I found her to be more naive than her character was originally set up to be in the first book. 
I found her fake love for Peta to be somewhat alarming at how easily she could slip into the lovey girlfriend role. Her impulses are emotionally driven and not very accurate most of the time. She is overly suspicious of everyone around her, quick to cast accusations if anyone says or does something she doesn't like. She and Peta form a strong bond with their time in the arena, and then they then again on tour across the districts as the star crossed lovers, the victors of the Hunger Games. Another thing that didn't sit well with me is that catching fire seemed repetitive. It was a lot like 